my name is Arun. Um, I would like to testify and praise God uh, for what he has done uh, in my daughter's life. My daughter is eight years old. She is born with, uh, she's a special needs child. She's born with uh, severe brain deformity. <clears throat> she was uh, very ill in the month of March and she was admitted to the hospital. Um, within, within a day, she was to be uh, taken to the ICU. Uh, the doctor said she has to be put on the ventilator. Uh, with her condition being uh, uh, cerebral palsy, with the severe deformity, with the weak muscles, it was, the doctor said, uh, they gave me an option whether to put her on the ventilator or not. Uh, it, uh, initially, on the first day, I said okay because there was no other choice. Uh, but the doctors the next day told me, uh, again they called me and said, despite me signing the consent letter the previous night, uh, the doctors re called me again to their office and tried to explain to me what it means putting a child of this condition into uh, on a ventilator, which basically meant I have to live, she will have to live her entire life on ventilator it was basically giving her on to the machine. Uh, doctors cannot do anything further, have to uh, completely leave her on the machine. Uh, that was an uh, extremely difficult decision to take, not to put her on the ventilator. We asked the doctor, what, what does it mean not to put her on the ventilator? And the doctor said, uh, she will pass away. Uh, it was extremely difficult for us. We have looked after her for eight years. Uh, she's extremely dear to us, but I had to take the decision of not to put her on the ventilator. And that's the time I had to completely surrender her to the Lord because there's nothing which we or not the doctors, nobody here could do anything. And that's the time it was completely and total surrender to the Lord that Lord, it is your will, let it be done according to your will. And uh, later on we uh, she was put on the, not on the ventilator, but something called non-invasive ventilator. Uh, her situation started deteriorating. She had to be transfused with uh, platelets. She had to be, uh, <coughs> her carbon dioxide was, she was retaining a lot of carbon dioxide in her lungs. So day by day, her, it was deteriorating and we were preparing that, okay, Lord, why she's suffering so much? If this is your will that she is not to be put on the ventilator. She is to be, the doctors are saying she's, she's going to pass away. Then why this much of suffering? And we kept on praying the divine mercy and kept on surrendering her, surrendering her sufferings to, along with the uh, Lord's sufferings, to the uh, atonement of wretched sinners. I said, Lord, may her suffering at least bring the wretched sinners back to you. Let her suffering not go waste. And that's when we started seeing changes that every day the tests were being done to see whether her carbon dioxide is coming down or not. And every time it was, the results were going up, a normal level in, of carbon dioxide retention is around 40, 40 to 45. That's when it's normal. And she was in the range of 150 to 160. And it's afterwards, after third, fourth day, it started coming down. It started coming to 110, then it came down to 80. Praise God, it, it finally came down and she was discharged from the ICU back to the ward. And praise God, she is today back home after 20 days. And I thank all the brothers and sisters who prayed for her, especially to uh, Brother Manjula who uh, came several times to pray for her. He even uh, asked Lord for a birthday gift because it was his birthday and he came and prayed for her, and especially for that, on that day. And uh, she was discharged and she's back home. Uh, we are able to feed her normally as well. Uh, I, I thank and praise God. Hallelujah.